Hi, I'm Robert, binocular designer at Analog Sky. A lot of people have been looking at Magic and Ember and wondering which to build. They both use 50mm lenses, right angle mirrors, the same 2 inch focusers and filter cartridges. So what's the difference and which should you choose? Let's start with one big difference that can make the decision really easy, IPD. This is the distance between your eyes measured in millimeters. Both models start at 58 millimeters IPD, but Magic opens to 70, while Ember opens to 75 millimeters. So if you need to accommodate a wider IPD than 70 millimeters for yourself or for a family member or friend, build Ember. The second cut and dry difference is that Ember is designed to take bolt-on solar filters. So if you'd like to safely observe the sun with white light up to 116x, you can do that with Ember. Magic does not have a solar filter attachment and will not have a solar filter attachment. That's because we want families with younger kids to have a clear way to distinguish between solar observation and night observation equipment because of the eyesight risk of improper use. Ember also has a solar finder and solar shade holder built in to make observing easier and more pleasant. Now we get into more subtle features that make each a unique instrument. Magic is lightweight and compact, around three pounds or 1.4 kilos. It's this cute, unassuming cube which makes it approachable for a lot of people who would normally wonder whether they have what it takes to use a telescope. So if you're that person, or you know someone like that, or you do astronomy outreach events a lot, magic can change those self-perceptions really fast. The portability factor is also huge. Anyone who has a harder time lifting and carrying something heavier will appreciate how light magic is. You'll never think, oh, I don't want to set up that heavy thing on the front porch tonight. So kids can use it on their own and carry it around the yard to find the best spots to set up. Magic fits in its 12 by 12 by 12 inch packing box with room for eyepieces and accessories. So it can also go with you on camping trips where a big telescope might not. That's not to say that Ember is huge by comparison, but size and weight are features that Magic maximizes. The optional laser pointer is built into Magic. Magic, the video course, is designed to be as straightforward as possible, with fewer no decisions for you to make. So if you're new to stargazing or amateur telescope making, this is something you might appreciate. Just relax and follow along. Now, let's say hi to Ember. You'll notice it looks more like a conventional binocular or binocular telescope. That's because it's designed to meet the desires of more experienced stargazers. The first of those design features is the ability to choose from a wider range of focal lengths, all the way out to and beyond 350 millimeters. We achieve that by making these tubes modular so you can connect more tube and internal baffling material to add more length to the tubes. So you can build Ember with just about any 50 millimeter lens you can find, f6, f7, take the f5 apochromats out of a pair of busted C stars, it's up to you. Of course, this extra magnification also means you'll want a sturdier tripod and head for less vibration. So that's an extra cost to consider. Our Ember Optics Kit comes with the same 225 millimeter focal length lenses we include in the Magic Kit. So it still works well with a basic tripod. Now, this Ember is set up for F6 for a great range balance between bright seven millimeter exit pupil seven by 50 view at the wide end and 100X at the zoomed end. The lenses are from Thor Labs, a US science supplier, and they aren't too bad at about $120 each. I personally love this configuration because it can show incredible Milky Way vistas and also zoom in on fantastic planetary and lunar views. So much versatility in such a small package. Now, in order to make this modularity possible, Ember has a sturdier, thicker frame to stay straight and align for longer distances. So Ember is closer to five pounds fully built. Because the eyepieces sit lower on the vertical axis than Magic, and because the lens weight can be distributed further forward, Ember balances better in general, especially with heavier, more expensive eyepieces. Here's a pair of nice basic 15 millimeter eyepieces. Whereas these are high end. Now, if you're ready for premium eyepieces like these, they tend to have a lot more glass, which makes them taller and heavier. So that makes Ember a better choice for you. There are two quarter 20 mount points underneath Ember. Uh, they're about 100 millimeters apart. So you can attach a long Vixen or Lasmodee dovetail for compatibility with a wide range of astronomy mounts. With an L bracket, you could even mount it onto a T saddle or a full go-to mount. Now with enthusiasts in mind, we also added this accessory grid to the top of Ember. 
It allows you to quickly hot swap finders and phone holders or even a laser depending on your location or mood. See? There's a grid accessory for heart, our 80 millimeters binocular, so you can swap your finders or lasers between Ember and heart this way. Community members have even been modeling their own grid accessories and sharing them. Now, lastly, Ember features really aggressive micro baffling, the full length of the optical tube. Here's a section of that tube. Now this is far darker than black paint and even one when we tested it against flockboard. So you get maximum contrast for seeing fine details and faint objects at a dark site. So to wrap up, Magic is lighter and more compact with less decisions to make while you build. The build is demonstrated in the videos by a nine year old, which gives people of any age confidence that they can do it too. Ember is heavier and longer and allows enthusiasts to choose their lenses and add any accessories they like. Lastly, if you build one, can you transform it into the other? Can magic become ember or ember become magic? Sure. Both use the same lenses and mirrors, so you just need different 3D printed parts and a few different pieces of hardware. Now, if you still have any questions about magic versus ember, you can ask away in the comments below or join our community by clicking members on the website and creating a free account. That'll give you access to our user forum where you can ask others about their experience using both models.